Hey, this is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. I'm a master licensed diabetes educator, a certified diabetes care and education specialist, and IFM certified in functional medicine. I help people to reverse insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and high blood sugar by finding and fixing the underlying root causes. In this video, we're gonna be talking about does eating sugar cause type two diabetes? And this is something that I see and hear about quite often, even in the natural health community and certainly in the lay community. We often hear the myth propagated that eating too much sugar is the cause of diabetes. We see it in movies, I see it on blog posts, I see it in Reddit posts and all over the internet. And let me first say, it should be obvious that eating too much sugar does not cause type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease that usually affects children up to the age of maybe 20 or so. It's a quickly progressing autoimmune disease. It does have a high degree of inheritability. In other words, there's a strong connection to genetics. There's usually some sort of trigger that could be a food trigger or an infectious disease trigger, but something typically triggers the immune system to destroy the insulin producing cells in the pancreas leading to this form of diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, completely different. And I'm not going to get into other forms of diabetes like LATA today, but type 2 diabetes, completely different. It is generally considered a lifestyle condition. It's a metabolic dysfunction more than it is a disease. And that's really what we're focusing on today. Does sugar actually cause type 2 diabetes. So I'm going to get into that here in just a minute. As always, I want to remind you, if you like this content, you like my videos, please give it a thumbs up and let me know that. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. With that said, let's dive into this video about the connection between sugar and type 2 diabetes. And let me just say from the outset that I do not believe sugar is the cause of type 2 diabetes, although it can be a contributing factor. And I'm going to explain all that to you here in the next few minutes. So first of all, what is type 2 diabetes? Type 2 diabetes is a chronic metabolic dysfunctional state related to energy metabolism. So what we see is energy substrates like glucose and fatty acids, including triglycerides, elevate in the bloodstream because we're not able to process them properly due to something called insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone that our pancreas makes and releases to control and regulate energy metabolism. When we eat food, for example, that has glucose in it, like carbohydrate foods in particular, our pancreas releases insulin and that allows us to take up glucose into our muscle cells and whatever's left over into our fat cells for storage. Insulin has an anti-catabolic effect in a fasted state, holding back the release of glucose from the liver and the release of free fatty acids from the fat cells. So when we're insulin resistant, we get too much glucose output from the liver and too much free fatty acid output from the fat cells. Hence, high triglycerides and high glucose in the blood. So what does eating sugar have to do with that? Actually, not that much in the fasted state. Sugar like table sugar, which is sucrose, is a combination of two different monosaccharides or single sugars. It's fructose and glucose. Glucose can be readily taken up by many cells in the body and under the influence of insulin can be taken up in large amounts into our muscles and fat cells after we eat it. Fructose, on the other hand, can only really be metabolized in any significant quantities by the liver. So when we eat sugar, and I'm talking here about sucrose or table sugar, added sugars in our foods and so forth, about half of it is fructose, which goes right to the liver. In the liver, it can either get turned into glucose, stored as glycogen, or when the liver's insulin resistant, it can be turned into fat through a process called de novo lipogenesis or DNL. 
fructose also drives the production of uric acid in the liver. Now, this is typically only a problem when we're over consuming energy. So if you are eating a hypoenergetic or hypocaloric diet, if you're in an energy deficit, for example, you're burning more energy than you're consuming and you have normal metabolic health, you don't have type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance, you should be able to process all of that sugar without it leading to much of a problem. Problem. However, in a hyper caloric state, a hyper energetic state where you're over consuming energy by either eating too much or eating energy dense foods, high carb and high fat foods like pizza and donuts and ice cream and so forth, then all that excess energy in the form of glucose and fructose in particular is going to lead to metabolic health problems. High glucose levels will lead to a high insulin surge, which will blunt our insulin receptors and can lead to a state of insulin resistance. Even more importantly, all that fructose in the liver will elevate uric acid levels, as I said a minute ago, and lead to the production of fat in the liver, which can drive insulin resistance in the liver, leading to high blood sugar. The work of Richard Johnson, which was highlighted by my friend Dr. David Perlmutter in the book Drop Acid, all about uric acid and its negative effect on metabolic health has shown us that high uric acid production promotes the creation and accumulation of body fat. Dr. Perlmutter talks about it as a signal to store fat for the winter. Uric acid also activates a protein called NLRP3 inflammasome which triggers an inflammatory cascade that can lead to and worsen insulin resistance. Uric acid also interferes with our ability to burn and utilize fat by inhibiting an enzyme called CPT1. This leads to an excess accumulation of fat, particularly in the liver and the abdominal area like visceral fat. And then in turn, that worsens and increases insulin resistance, leading ultimately to high blood sugar and type 2 diabetes. Fructose and glucose, for that matter, are found in fruits, but most of the fructose and glucose, the sugar that we eat, is coming from added sugars. The average U.S. adult consumes 126 grams of added sugar per day. That's about 25 teaspoons of table sugar each and every day. All that excess fructose in particular clogs up the liver, driving up uric acid levels, driving the production production of fat in the liver leading to insulin resistance. Now, again, I'm not saying that eating sugar or even starch for that matter causes type 2 diabetes. In fact, there have been studies that show that diabetes can be improved as well as weight, blood sugar, and insulin sensitivity on a diet consisting only of rice, fruit, and sugar. In the 1930s, Dr. Walter Kempner at Duke University, in fact, created the rice diet and did these studies. And there's been follow-up studies in the 1980s and 2000s that have confirmed the results of these original studies. But here's the key. The rice, fruit, and sugar was consumed in a hypoenergetic or hypocaloric state. In fact, a drastically reduced state of energy. And like I said in the beginning, if you eat those foods in a low energy state, they're not going to cause type 2 diabetes. And in fact, according to these studies, can even help to reverse type 2 diabetes, although I don't recommend following that plan. So here's the key. It's hyper palatable foods that cause the problem. Hyper palatable foods, which are usually a combination of processed refined oils, sugars, starches, salt, flavorings, and other food additives to make the food look, smell, and taste appealing. These foods are engineered to activate the brain's reward center, creating a release of dopamine and giving a feeling of pleasure, comfort, and reward. Over time, you need more and more of that stimulation to create the same feeling of pleasure or reward, and that drives what we call food addiction or food cravings for these hyper palatable foods 
foods. It leads to overeating, overconsumption of added sugars, as well as the added oils and chemicals. And that's what drives largely insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. So do I recommend eating a lot of sugar? either sugary fruits or starchy foods or added sugars and processed refined foods? Definitely not, because there's a very low amount of satiety that comes with those foods, so they don't make you feel full. You can eat more and more of them. They're usually combined in these hyperpalatable foods which drive overeating. So what's the answer? The answer is to eat whole foods, real foods that do not combine simple refined sugars with lots of fats and flavor enhancers. And we wanna make sure we're controlling the amount of food we're eating so that we're either in energy balance or if we need to lose weight and improve metabolic health, we wanna be in an energy deficit so that we have to burn our own stored energy in the form of glycogen and fat from our fat cells. Combine that with good physical activity, sleep, stress management, good nutrition, and make sure you get your nutrients, gut health, adrenal health, thyroid health, and reduce inflammation, and you can prevent or even reverse type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. All right, I hope you found that helpful. If you want to learn more about this type of information, I have a free gift for you. It's called the Blood Sugar Manifesto. I just rewrote it, and you can get the brand new version by clicking the link below in the description for this video. It's totally free and contains a ton of great information on how to optimize your blood sugar and metabolic health. Also, remember, if you like this content, please subscribe to this channel and click that bell for notifications. And I'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment underneath this video. Tell me what you thought about it. Let me know what type of diet and lifestyle you're following and whether it's working for you or not. And if you have some questions for me, put them down below and I'll try to answer as many as I possibly can. All right, this is Dr. Brian Mole, the Diabetes Coach. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back on my next video.